Partly because I have serious impulse control issues, and also, I'm very curious. I bought this set, a plane, Anaheim plane, from Amazon. It's a number four standing style plane with quite possibly the worst block plane ever invented. Into the bin it goes for 20 euro. It's a lot of metal for 20 euro. Actually, that's a lot of metal for partially 20 euro. I'm wondering if I can take this, the cheapest of the cheap, cheap planes, and make it run. Make it useful in my workshop. Could I even dare to make it as good as this? My Clifton number six and a half plane. Can I make this 20 quid plane anywhere near as good as this 400 quid plane? Not Jesus, but I'll give it a go. So we bought the plane. Now what? Can we just use it straight out of the box? For 20 quid? Including a block plane? Probably not. But let us start with a little anatomy lesson on the parts of a plane. Most planes that you see like this are based on the Stanley Bailey pattern. So you can see here, this is a four and a half, it's a slightly bigger chisel, but this is a chisel, my apologies, slightly bigger plane, but this is a Stanley number four and a half. You can see, if I strip them back a little bit here, several consistencies with how they're put together. So they have the same pieces here. You have your frog, which can be adjusted back and forth. Your cap iron. And you have your, your plane blade with the cap iron on it. So you can see there's, there's not a lot left on this baby. It's an old, old tool. So basically they're all just copies of the original Bailey planes that Stanley eventually bought. And like most of them are are like this in that style you can generally a lot of times even just swap straight over between one and the other if that wasn't wider it would fit and proof positive of that is a second favorite plane i own is this record number five and the, the consistencies between these two are quite quite incredible this blade would actually work perfectly well in that the cap irons are slightly different design, but you can take the parts off. So, if you have an old Stanley plane, chances are, if you buy a cheap one, you can get the replacement parts off of them. But this guy, he's not very well set up. So I'm just going to compare the two here directly. So you can see, I'm blow that out. So, I'll just take these apart. With all budget tools, finishing is where they fall down. So you can see here, I'm just gonna zoom in on several different parts. You're going on the castings. You can see the difference between the record here, it's nice and smooth, whereas they're just inches of uh, finish on that. And again, the front knob is really cheap plastic. There'll probably eventually be a project to replace the knob and the tote here on this with a fresh one. And you can see then a part which I didn't show, which is in here, how to adjust the blades. This was known as the yoke. And you see the amount of travel that's in the yoke here compared to the record. The record moves smoothly, it's wider, it's not as 
doesn't stick out as much. So if I put this in, you can see that that yoke is sticking out quite far and hooking down compared to the yoke of the record, which is actually just below the surface. But more concerning for this one is the position of the frog. So here with the record, you can see the frog is positioned just on the opening and it's perfectly dead square. Whereas this, it's off to one side. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up the frog and see if I can adjust it to have it running straight, see if there's any issues inside it. So how do you adjust the frog? Well, very simply, as you loosen these two screws in the top of the frog, just turn or a half turn. I'll do this on side, normally I do it on its face. So here at the back, we have this screw. What you need is a long screwdriver. And to adjust frog front and back, you're simply just turning that in to go forward or out to go backwards. And you can see there now, just with that little move, how far the frog has went back. So it's relatively simple. Just loosen, tighten the screws, get it where you want to be. When you're happy, you just lock it down. With screws in the front of the frog and you're away in a heck. So now that we have our frog adjusted where it needs to be and the plane blade sharp, we're just going to see how thin of a cut we can get without the additional stuff we need to do like flattening the sole and adjusting things like the tension here, the fit of the chip breaker and a few other small things like that. As you can see here, I tried and tried and adjusted everything, but out of the box, even with a razor sharp blade, this couldn't cut butter. My feeling is the problem is the base of the plane is warped. So I can't get a shape of this at all. You can see there the problem partially lies with the fit of this chip breaker. Chips going up inside it, and in fact. It's caused the chip breaker to shift. So we need to fix this, the fit of the chip breaker, and we need to flatten this base. I'm going to start with flattening the base. That's going to involve putting sandpaper on our piece of marble or whatever flat surface we have and just running the plane back and forth over it until we get this perfectly flat. Now just before I do that I've gone over these knobs and the knob and the tote just cut any ridges that were in the plastic moulding process and give it a little rub of sandpaper. Any little thing will bind on your hand. Again if you go I'll probably replace these with wooden ones. It's a good little project in the future. So when you're doing this flattening, it's very important to have the plane so it's under tension because the pressure of this lever cap can deform the base of the plane. So you have it under tension, blade drawn all the way up so the blade is not poking out because we don't have to wear away our blade. And then we'll start on that. But the first little fettle that I'm going to do is this lever cap is not the easiest to use and if we compare the edge of this lever cap to the edge of my record one you can see the record one has a little dome and this one doesn't so i'm just going to get pull it back there i'm going to use a file but you could use a piece of sandpaper on a stick just to take the very edge off that and make it easier for it to work I just want to take sorry, I don't sure hold it. So I just want to take the sharp edge off and I'm careful not to cut into the spring here of the lever cap. And again this could just be done with the sandpaper on the stick. But files are relatively inexpensive. And they're very handy for these kind of jobs. So 
all I'm doing is just taking that corner off just to help the lever cap overcome that pressure that's at the back. So. And again, just working it around, twisting as I go through to give it a perfect round. And we'll just do a little tester, see if it's easier. And that's so much easier. So much less pressure to get it locked. And when you lock it then, there's no drag. So for 30 seconds work, you can drastically improve a cheap little plane just by pressurizing that back and taking the sharp corner off it. So again, we're set up now. I have a nice big piece of sandpaper here and tensioned. Most of it. This is a very rough piece of the to get this. Trying to keep equal pressure on the foot. So slip. And once you have a few passes done, you'll be able to see where it's touching. So what you want to do then? Get a permanent marker and scroll all over the base. And I get the easiest way to see where it's getting removed, where it's getting left. Trying to keep that pressure even so we're not wearing holding it. Trying to the best of the sound paper. This will take hours, but it will be worth it. But it was worth it. Look at that. Ooh, shiny. Right, so now we have that base. The next thing to deal with is the cap arm. So, if you take an example of this record one I have here, you can see how the cap arm, which is this part on top, meets with the blade. There's a nice sharp slope on it, which means that very little can get in between the two of them. Now, if I compare it to the blade and cap iron in this, you can see that that cap iron is almost rounded completely on the end. So, there's a huge area for timber to get stuck. And that's the main thing that was stopping me when I went to put sharp on it. So, what I need to do is grind that angle on this. You can do it on the flat stone, same way as I did the base. But I have a grinder here, so I'm just going to use the grinder for handiness. So, you want to get this down to pretty much so a razor point. So that when the two come together under pressure there's no gap between them so 
So I might need to lean that back just a little bit there. Because when the pressure comes on, there will be a gap in the front. So now comes the time to combine these two. So if you've never done it before, like that, you don't want to damage your sharp edge. Now, setting up the distance between the two of these is all about the cut you want to take. The less there is, the less deep the cut will have to be before the chip breaker engages. So, also known as the cap iron. So, I'm just going to set that. I have a bit of black on this just for demonstration. About a mil black. So, it's going to have a fairly aggressive cut. Okay, so... See there, but a mill, the blade sticking out. So now it's time to set it up. So, back in the blade, back in my iron. Now, I like it to just be snug. I put on the lever cap. That means it's nice and tight when it goes up. So adjusting the depth of the cut. Free is always the best price. The paper allows you to see much clearer if the blade is protruding. So you can see it there if it'll focus. This is a very difficult thing to show, but you can just see there that the blade is protruding. Now, what you want to do is keep adjusting it till. You have the bare minimum amount of blade exposed and that is even across both sides. So again you can see there there's it doesn't seem like a lot but there's still a lot of blades sticking out there. That's a very aggressive cut. But the bit of white paper is a great sighting tool. You're very easily able to see the difference between the white and the blade sticking out. I mean, that's a full width shaving. We're like, I'm gonna get a shaving off before. And let's see what the micrometer says 0.2 mil or the caliper. Let's see if we can get a fire. Ideally, if something is perfectly set up, you should be able to get a shaving that's full length. And the caliper shouldn't be able to reach it. Almost went this area go. So yeah, for a few hours of work and then a little bit of flattening, you can take a plane that came in a set for twenty, so the plane itself not even worth fifteen or sixteen quid. Turn it into a good enough quality for a professional. So, have I taken this baby from fit for the bin to fit for a king? Sort of. I mean, it, it runs really smoothly now. Like I showed earlier in the video, I can get shavings that won't even show up on the calipers. The bottom is as flat as I'm going to get it. I I still kept the rubberized handles. Probably make a project out of replacing them. But is it worth your while to buy something this cheap and then convert it? This cheap? Probably not. I spent countless hours flattening this, trying to adjust the frog and 
bits I probably didn't even show where I had to just amount because the frog couldn't come forward. Overall, I probably put the additional hours in this that I could have just went and bought something a lot better. But would I generally recommend doing it? I always recommend you know how your tools work. And getting this, maybe getting one second hand somewhere or even just buying something a bit dear. This was literally the cheapest I could buy. Like I said, it was 1990 something for this and the block plane. But if you go up to 30, 40, 50 quid and do the stuff I've done here, flattening the base, making sure that your frog is adjusted, correcting the fit of the cat of the chip breaker to the blade, having the blade sharp, you will have a plane that will just eat your timber and give you such beautiful edges. Would I recommend you do it the exact same thing I do? No. Would I recommend you teach yourself how to set a plane up, how to flatten it, how to get it down to the microns cutting? Absolutely. God damn yes. Until next time, friends. Thank you.